Okay, um, let's now look at some examples of uh, list functions. Um, so most, most list functions operate on each item in a list. For example, we let's assume that we have the function f here. Um, and uh, it takes an argument x. Uh, and we have a base case. Uh, if list x is empty, then we do something. Uh, else, we have a recursive case which does something uh, involving the header of the list, uh, the tail of the list, and the function it, f itself. So we're calling f recursively. So if we take one example, we have uh, uh, the function length, which take a single argument x. Then we could say, and the purpose of this function is to return the length of the list. The base case would be if uh, the list is null, if null of x, then 0. So we return zero if the if the list is empty. Else, we return the result of the expression one plus length of tail of x. So we call this function recursively. We're calling the function length here, and uh, tail of x gives us the tail. So we've basically uh, reduce the size of the problem. That's the the important part, of course, in recursive solutions to uh, solve uh, a smaller version of the original problem. So if we are able to solve the or compute the length of the tail of the list, then we just add one to that and we get the length of the overall list. And this function is linearly recursive because f calls itself only once on the right hand side and this is very common f in this case is length so we're only uh, calling f once on 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 the right hand side uh, in, in the body of the function now let's look at some common list operations here uh, append is one which is quite common so append takes two parameters uh, x and z and append returns a new list with elements of x followed by elements of z so if i do append one two three four five this is actually equal to one two ampersand three four five because ampersand uh, sorry at i mean the at sign because it's a built-in function in ml so we if it's a built-in function, we can try it. I can say one, two, append it with three, four, five. Yes, it works. So I get back one, two, three, four, five, int list. So I append the list th three, four, five uh, to the list one, two. Now, if we look at the the uh, base case for this uh, append function uh, it must be true that if I append z to the empty list I get z back. Uh, the base case I can then use pattern matching so if the first list is of the form a double colon y where a is the hat and y is the tail and the second list is set, then that is equal to uh, a double colon append y comma set. So what are we doing here? We are constructing a list here on the right hand side where a is the head of the list and the tail is the result of calling append again now with y, which is the tail of the uh, first list, and z as the second argument. Uh, we'll actually see this in, in, in the next slide, how we basically trace this functionality. So let, let's, uh, let's uh, look at that in a minute. But how would we write this in ML? Well, we could do it this way. This is one way of doing it. We will actually look at another way of, uh, 
of uh, programming in, in uh, ML using cases and patterns, as it's called. We'll look at that later. But here we do it this way. Fun append of x, comma set, where x and set are, are, uh, are the parameters. If x is null, we're basically looking at this case here, the base case, then we just return set. There's nothing to uh, append to. Else, we construct a list using header, header of x, double colon, with the result of doing append to the tail of the list, comma set. Now, uh, well, this is uh, something that we have covered uh, uh, previously, that recursive function always consists of a base case and a recursive step, and in our case, uh, the base case uh, has something to do with the uh, null list, and the recursive step then uses head and tail and uh, uh, a recursive call to the append function. Now let's trace this here. So let's assume that we're doing append 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, so the base case is obviously not true at the to start with because the list 1, 2 is not null. Our x here, the formal parameter x, stands for the list 1, 2. The formal parameter z stands for the list 3, 4, 5. So the recursive step says we take the header of the list, which in our case is 1. 1 is the header of the list 1, 2. And we cons that to the result of the recursive call append with the tail of x. x is 1, 2, so tail is the list 2. Notice it's the list 2. And uh, we append that list to 3, 4, 5. Notice that set that comes in as a formal parameter is unchanged. Now, Let's then trace the call append to 345. Uh, again, now our x is uh, 2, so it's not null. So we take the header of the list, which is the element 2, that's the header of the list, and we append that to the tail of x, but notice now tail is empty. The tail of the list 2 is the empty list, and we append and the second argument is 3, 4, 5, which is unchanged. That's our set here. So we need to trace the call append with the empty list and the list 3, 4, 5. Um, what do we get? Well, now x is null. So we can apply th the base case is applicable. Now, if the the first parameter is null, then we return set. So we return th the list 3, 4, 5 in this case. So we get 1, cons 2, cons 3, 4, 5. Now how is that computed? Well, we cons together 2 and the list 3, 4, 5 to get the list 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we cons 1 to the result to get the final list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So basically what append is doing here, it's traversing the former list until it's empty and consing using cons for each of the individual elements of that former list. And then finally, once the former list is empty, it returns the second list. That's what's happened here, where append empty list 3, 4, 5 gives the, re gives the result 3, 4, 5. So how long time does it take for append to process a list of length n? Well, it's kind of obvious, isn't it, that it takes uh, O of n. And we the time complexity of this function 
depends on the length of the first list. And if we assume that the length of the first list is n, then the time complexity is O of n. So this was append. Now let's look at another one uh, called reverse. So it takes uh, the same number of parameters as append. It takes x and set and it reverses x and prepends it to set and prepends it. So what does that mean? It means that if I do reverse uh, of the 2, 3, 4 then uh, if, if, if I do reverse of the list 2, 3, 4 and the list 1 I get 4, 3, 2 and then 1. Why? Because I reverse the first list to get 4, 3, 2 and prepend it to the first list which is 1. So I get 4, 3, 4, 3 2, 1. Uh, now, if we try to identify the base case and the recursive step here, it's uh, kind of obvious that if I reverse an empty list and prepend it to set, I just get set back. If uh, the first list is not the empty list, then I can break it up to break it up into a, a head and a tail using this cons pattern. So my a is the head and my y is the tail, and set is the second list. Um, this I can solve this problem by calling reverse again with the tail, but consing the hat to the first list. So notice what happened when I did reverse 2, 3, 4, comma 1. We basically took the hat, which is 2, and made a new list by doing cons, construction, con, uh, constructor, uh, consing 2 with 1 to get the list 2, 1. Then we call the reverse function with y, which is the tail, that's the list 3, 4, and uh, the list 2, 1, and so on. And actually ML, ha ML has a built-in function for a reverse uh, as well. We saw earlier that it has a built-in function for append, it also has a built-in function for reverse, and in that case I can actually do something like reverse 1, 2, 3, 4. And I get back 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, the way reverse is implemented is similar to what we just discussed here. So reverse of x, or REV of x, really just calls another function, a hel helper function, with reverse of x, comma, um, empty list. So to start with, the list that I'm prepending to is, is empty. So it uses uh, the, the function that we just discussed. Now the question is, is, is that function also uh, built in? I doubt it. Can I do something like this? No. It says error unbound variable or constructor reverse. So it doesn't know this uh, function name reverse here. So if we trace this call in a similar way as we did with for the append function, let's assume that we're doing reverse of the list 2, 3, 4 and we want to uh, prepend it to the list 1. So uh, our x is 2, 3, 4. We, the base case doesn't, is not applicable yet. We reverse by uh, we re reverse the tail. The tail of the list is 3, 4. Uh, and the second argument to reverse is uh, the result of consing the header with set. So the header is 2 and we cons it with the uh, list set which is 1. That means we are basically doing reverse of the list 3, 4 and 2, 1. 
in the so we do a, a, a recursive call in the next part we our x is the list 3 4 and our set is the list 2 1 we reverse the tail which is uh, only the list 4 F the list 4 is the tail of the list 3 4 and the second argument to reverse is the header of our list x which is 3 and we const that to set what is set set is 2 1 <clears throat> so we're doing reverse of the list 4 and the list 3 2 1 now we call uh, reverse again uh, and uh, the list our x is now 4 and set is the list 3 2 1 it's still not null we cannot use the base case we perform a uh, recursive call reverse uh, we compute the tail the tail of our list 4 is uh, the empty list and the second argument is the header of the list which is 4 const with set set is 3 2 1 so we do 4 const 3 2 1 so we're doing reverse of the empty list comma 4 3 2 1 and finally access the empty list that means the base case is true if null of x then we just return set so we return 4 3 2 1 and again reverse is here the time complexity of reverse is o of n where n is the length of x because we're just traversing the list here item by item we are taking the we are uh, reducing the list by one item at in in each iteration and we do this then uh, n times um, we could actually implement reverse in a different manner we could do it this way uh, if null of x then we return nil or we could, we could reverse the tail and then append with uh, a list that contains only the header uh, <clears throat> so let's actually trace this solution to see uh, how that works so if we reverse uh, the list one two three four then according to the recursive step we just call reverse immediately with the tail and append to that the result of the list that only contains the header so basically that means we would do reverse with the tail which is two three four and we would do append with the list that contains the um, contains the uh, the header now to reverse 234 we would do reverse of the tail and append to that the header which is the 2 and then we are appending 1 here as well so what I'm doing here 234 gives us 3 4 appended with 2 and append to 1 because that's what we is the result of the previous call so doing this further a reversing 3 4 means that we're reversing the tail which is 4 and we would append to that the list that contains 3 and then this is coming from the previous calls now reversing 4 means that I supposed to reverse the tail and the tail is then the empty list and then I append 4 and still keep the rest and then finally 
if I have a null as the uh, as my argument to reverse, then I return nil. So I would be doing reverse. Yeah, reverse of nil is nil, so I'm basically nothing changes. So I would compute this. Rever uh, uh, or, or actually, let me do it this way. This would be the expression that I would need to compute, and I would append uh, the empty the, the list four to to the empty list to get the, the list four. I would append uh, the list that contains three to the list that contains four, and I could, would get four three. So I would basically get this first four, then four three then 4, 3, 2, or then 4, 3, 2, 1. So this would be one way of implementing reverse uh, compared to the previous solution here. And notice that the, the this previous solution uses two arguments to reverse, this one uses a single argument. But uh, the problem here is that this is not as efficient as this previous solution, because uh, let's assume that we send in a list of length n, then append is o of n. We 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 uh, uh, know that from the our previous discussion, and reverse is executed n times. So this version of reverse is actually o of n squared. So this is not as uh, as efficient as. Uh, uh, as uh, the previous solution.